<laughs> Everyone, uh, welcome back to Speaking of Spirits. I'm uh, SOS or Colleen, and I'm here with my co host, Dirty Birdie. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we thought we'd lighten it up the mood a little bit, and we're talking about uh, epitaphs or um, funny or serious gravestones, right? So, or, or inspiring, yeah. Or inspiring, yeah. Sometimes I found a lot of recipes on gravestones, which I thought was kind of oh, yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I found I a did, few I, of those last night. I know. I think I'm thinking I should probably write some of those down and try them, like bread and fudge and cookies. And I thought that was kind of cute, you know. Um, but we'll start off with uh, Shakespeare, right? And <clears throat> so I'm I'm having a little bit of a hard time with the Shakespeare uh, tombstone here because of the way they wrote it. There's one word in particular. I'm not sure what it is. So because a lot it. of times user V's in the old fonts. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll see. It says good friend for, and this is the word, I-E-S-U-S. -E -S. Isis sake? I-E-S-U-S. I-E-S-U-S. Hmm. I know. So good friend for maybe it's supposed to mean heaven's sake. I don't know. Forbear to dig dust enclosed here. So basically saying you're a good friend, you know. Um, but blessed be ye men, ye spares these stones. So don't disturb me. Yeah. And cursed be he that moves my bones. Yep. You'll be cursed yeah. if you move my body. Yep. Yeah. Don't yeah, dig I like me up. That. Don't move my don't move my body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I found another one. I don't know who this person is, but Lily Gray. And her tombstone says, Victim of the Beast 666. What? Isn't that nuts? It's it's real. I mean, I saw the picture of this thing in a in a, a grave a graveyard. So you guys, if you want to Google it and look at it, it's bananas. Victim of the Beast 666. When did she die? I don't know. It didn't have a date that I remember. Maybe it did, but was it? Is it super old? It's. I don't. I don't remember. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, and I do have a picture of one that is creepy as hell. And uh, let me show it to you guys because this is at the Ohio Asylum. Oh, that place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It just says specimens. Oh. Oh, it's like, wh what does that mean? That's all it says. What does it mean? Is it body parts? Is it brains? Because they did a lot. I, I, what does it mean? Oh. Could it? Oh, God. I, I hate to think this, but I, animal specimens? Or is no, it? I don't think so. It's the Ohio. like human experiments. Human. That's what I'm thinking. It's its experiments. That's, it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's awful. I mean, damn. Okay, so you got to remember back then, if you got put in a place like that, you're not a human anymore. You're yeah, walking meat. Oh God, it's just terrible. Anyway, that one was creepy, but we have a lot of funny ones. Um, this one is bananas. This whole thing was written on this lady's tombstone. In memory of Ellie Shannon, and I looked her up and she had immigrated from Ireland. Age 26 years old, who was fatally burned March 21, 1870, by the explosion of a lamp filled with, <clears throat> filled with Reed Danforth's non-explosive burning fluid. So she burned to death with non-explosive fluid? Yeah, so in a lamp. Yeah. So this guy was marketing, because you know, and that's one of the episodes that we're going to do at some point. We're going to come up. I have a ton of old ads that were saved that <laughs> in the newspapers, and I have tons and tons of those. When I run across them, I save them. And I'm telling you what, they advertise everything. So here's this poor lady. They put the this non-explosive burning fluid, so it would light, like it would 
provide you light and illumination, but it wouldn't explode, and then it exploded and killed her. Did it explode, or did she, like, break the lamp? Well, fatally burned, it's a, but like, I think I remember reading um, about it saying that it, it exploded. Oh, okay. I was thinking yeah. old-school hurricane oil lamp. Those, you, you drop it, it goes everywhere. Yeah. And it's on fire, so. Right. Yeah, we used to use those all the time when I grew up in the mountains because we'd lose our power. We didn't have generators. Nobody had generators. You used those hurricane lamps and a wood stove. I've Dangerous. only seen them with decorations. I, I never used one. Yeah, we had to a lot because our power would go out when it would be heavy snow. So here's another one that's just bananas. Um, in memory of Jane McCure, bitten by a rabid coyote, Developed rabies, became violent, and was smothered with a feather bed when her husband came, returned. She and her unborn child were dead and buried. That's on her tombstone. Oh, jeez. He Can you imagine? Her, he smothered her with a mattress? Yeah, I mean, it's probably, she became violent. Well, yeah. You so, get rabies, you get rabies, yeah, and you and just let it go. Yeah, he probably knew it's... not to get bitten or anything, so he picked up the mattress and smothered her. And probably just like tossed her on the floor and tossed the mattress on top of her and, and sat on her. On. Yep. God, Scary. That's awful. I mean, rabies, people don't realize rabies, you get bitten by an animal with rabies unless you get treatment. I think it's within 24 hours. It could be even less. You yep. will contract rabies and there is no cure. You will die. Yep. You've got less than a day to get to the hospital. And yeah. From what I understand, it is not a pleasant experience because no. they break out needles like this long. Not anymore. Not anymore. They used oh, okay. to. But yeah. um, I've gone in for um, the pre-rabies shot um, when I worked with uh, bats. But um, so I had to go in for the, you can get the, a series of shots to help prevent contraction. But then if you do get bitten... And the crazy thing about bats is their teeth are so sharp that you may not know you've been bitten. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. Um, there was another one that I liked this one. And this one would be fitting for my dad. It was one hell of a life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If my dad had a tombstone, I'd have, I'd have one of his little airplanes back here on the fridge. I'd have that on there. But it's, it was one hell of a life. Yeah. Maybe I should yeah, make see, one for him. Yeah, see, that's in the inspiring part. Yeah, yeah. He was just, he loved every moment of every day. He was really, really a great guy. Winston Churchill. And if you don't know who that is, you younger folks out there, you need to read up on some history. Um, he says, I'm ready to meet my maker. Whether my maker is prepared for the great ordeal of meeting me is another matter. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, he was great. I saw that one. Yeah. Um, I like this one. This one was cute. <laughs> this gal had a sense of humor. Um, so it's it, the tombstone. And then right down at the very, so she, her husband was on one side of the, you know, the plot. And then she's on this plot. And then down at the very bottom, it says, if you can read this, you're standing on my boobs. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. <laughs> I'm like, great. Girl, that was great. Another one that says, I told you I was sick. Yep. that I think that one is in Ireland somewhere. Oh, my God. Um, Doc Holliday? I don't know. Is this one real? It says he died in bed. I know Doc he did Holliday. die in bed, but I don't know if that tombstone was real. I don't know. Uh, Doc Holliday. Might be. He, I think he died from tuberculosis. Yeah, he died in bed. Yep. Yeah. So, that's probably real yeah i don't know alfred hitchcock i'm in on a plot <laughs> <laughs> i like that oh, one. Oh, the pun what would you say kelly oh i'm not getting one you're I'm not getting nope i'm getting cremated well, i'm getting cremated too but i think i want a tombstone somewhere i think it'd be cool i don't know maybe i'll have I'll have all of the animals with ghosts or something too. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't thought about it. 
Just take me out to my own, one of my favorite fishing holes and spread me around. That's good enough. Well, I thought, you know, this is morbid, but when I get to the point where I'm ready to go, just take me up to like Island Park and let the grizzlies take me out, you know? <laughs> Give back to nature a little bit. <laughs> That's a sky funeral with more steps. <laughs> okay. For a good time, dig. <laughs> I loved that. What a great sense of humor. And, and that must have been on the back. I didn't see the front, like the name or anything. For a good time, dig. And Mel Blanc, remember who that was, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. If you guys don't know who that was, he did like all of the voices for Looney Tunes. And yep. called him the man of a thousand voices, right? Yep. And so he just did Bugs Bunny and... Daffy Duck. Every, like all of them. Yosemite, he did all he, of them. He did all of them. Porky Pig. Um, he sa His says, that's all, folks. Yep. Yep. Rodney Dangerfield says, has one that says, "There's there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I loved him. God, he was great. God, I need to Netflix some of his movies. I'll tell you. Um, I found one that says, I was hoping for a pyramid. <laughs> like that one um and this one this one would be good this one would be good it says now i know something you don't oh that's deep uh-huh i like um, it besides the casket that's deep <laughs> <laughs> um i love edgar Allan poe his says quote the raven nevermore yep that's yes. a good one I saw one that said, here, here lies an atheist all dressed up and nowhere to go. I have that one. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that was my next one. I like that, too. <laughs> oh, God. Um, here lies John Yeast. Pardon me for not rising. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is your last, think about it, folks. This is going to be your last shot at saying something to the world. Funny, profound, inspiring, yeah, anything like that. Yeah, make it a good one, man. And we don't think about it, right? We don't, you go through your whole life not thinking about it. And then all of a sudden it's like, somebody's going to have to come up with this if you haven't written it down somewhere for them to put it on your tombstone. Yeah. Did you see the one where there's a headstone and that says burgers? And then kitty corner from that, it says fries. Fries, yeah. <laughs> now, do you remember who Merv Griffin was? Merv Griffin, yeah, he was a game show host for the longest time well and he had a talk show yeah and talk show. he had like a um it was like a johnny carson type show so yeah i remember him oh gosh uh yeah so i'm dating myself it was it was a good show but anyway he says i will not be right yep. back after this message after these <laughs> messages yep <laughs> so um and another one i found it says go away i'm asleep <laughs> <laughs> um this one was interesting because man i was thinking a long time about this one um i came here without being consulted and i leave here without my consent uh-huh yeah and that's so uh didn't ask to be born and didn't ask to die yeah, well, pretty much. I didn't ask to be born, and I didn't get permission to die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that, hmm. Um, I can so relate to this one. It says, destined to be a woman with too many cats. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy cat lady story. The crazy cat lady. Let's see. I, had, I think I had another tombstone to show you guys. The specimen still gets me. Um. This, okay, let me share this screen. This one was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I saw that one. I like it. Um, I you know I do I whenever I go anywhere. So um, I'm I'm I uh, have a trip this next week. I um. I always go to graveyards and it's not because I feel like there's any paranormal mm, anything going on because I really don't find much going on in them. 
but I love to read the epitaphs. I, and I love to, you know, you go by families and their names and there's just so much history there that it's, it's sad for me because I've kind of, I love history and it's sad that all of a sudden, you know, it's gone. These people are gone and their stories are gone. And if they're not written down somewhere, they're yeah. gone. Yeah. The one here is pretty interesting. I mm -hmm. mean, and one, one end I, is like, is where they started. And then mm -hmm. I mean, where, where this city started, super old 1860s or something like that, super old graves. And then, you know, you go around and they get start getting earlier and earlier mm -hmm. and there's different sections for uh japanese people and oh i didn't realize there was different sections i yeah, i know the older section real close to isu mm -hmm. and some of those they're so little that all the writing is now worn off and i yeah. hope they have them recorded yeah but they don't really have a specific section i think you can just buy a plot because they're all different dates and whatnot but it's really interesting to walk past some of the really super mm -hmm. old ones yep. or oh yeah, they've got different little sections. I think I saw a Greek one and mm -hmm. I think I saw, um, well, maybe an, an Arab one, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. They're really interesting to look at. Some of them still have the old, old, old photos. Yeah. Well, think about it. it was, we, we're a railroad town, so a lot of people were coming and going, and people died. And oh yeah, you know, people died all so, the time. Yeah. So, um, another tombstone I found, and I like this one a lot. It said, "Shit happens." Yep. <laughs> and uh, okay, this one was funny. This couple had a good sense of humor. Um, the last name is Spanks, and it says Arthur Spanks's wife, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. She always said her feet were killing her, but no one believed her. <laughs> yep. I've seen that one. I don't know what it, what it quite means. Like, some people are saying that she was doing a lot of housework. Oh. And no help. So that Maybe. might have contributed to it. Yeah, but, worked and... herself to death kind of thing. Yeah. Um, this one, I think, was in Ireland. Uncle Walter loved to spend. He had no money in the end, but with many a whiskey and many a wife, he really did enjoy his life. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And then another one, of course, ending with this one, it says, uh, I see dumb people. I see dumb people. <laughs> I don't know. They're great. They're great. Did you have any others in particular? Um... I mean, I got the Jesse James one. Oh, what did that say? It says, murdered by a traitor and a coward whose name is not worthy to appear here. Wow. So, and I got one. Was that his? Who killed Jesse James? Was that a member of his gang, right? His own gang? Uh, I would think so. They called him a... Traitor. A murder, yeah. murder and a traitor and a coward. So, yeah, and... I got one from a mathematician, Ludolf Van Cohen, who was the first person to calculate the value of pi to the 35, 35th dec decimal place. And that's uh, engraved on his tombstone. Uh, nice. Yeah, it's in a big circle from start to finish. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, do you know who Jack Lemon is? Lemon yeah. is? You bet. Yeah, that's all it says on his... Well, this is what it says on his tombstone. It just says, Jack Lemon in. And that's it. End? In. Like, yeah. like... Yeah, like... When the movie screen pops up and it's like, this person, this person, and... and oh, like Jack starring. Lemon in. In. And yeah. that's it. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Because he's been in, in so many films. Yeah, he was, he was a great actor. Yeah. Uh... Betty Davis has one that says she did it the hard way. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was Joan Hackett that said, go away. I'm asleep. <laughs> uh, so I went to Forest Lawn in Hollywood years ago. Oh. And that was really, really something. 
because you have just all of these Hollywood legends are buried there. And it's, you spend days there just reading them, tombstones and going through there. Oh, it's I really bet. something else. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to check it out someday. And then uh, New Orleans, of course, I had to go see. This was, they have now um, cordoned it off so you can't get right up to the tomb anymore, but Marie Laveau's. Mm -hmm. And you go, used to go up like you always, you left her something. It was a pay of respect or else she might come after you. So a lot mm -hmm. of people left, um, you know, coins, quarters, pennies, whatever they had, and flowers. Um, but and and every night they would take that money and it went into maintaining everything in there and it really is a fascinating um cemetery because and i always thought that they buried all of their dead in new orleans because of the high water table that they buried them above ground but that's not the case and when we went through a guided tour there before we walked around we were told by the guide that the that um, the way those vaults are built, you'll notice on them that they have, like, I, I don't even know, but like, so the two the the tombs go back to early 1600s, I think, somewhere in there, 1700s, when the French were in that area, right? Mm -hmm. And they built these, and like every. I don't know, don't quote me on this, but let's say every 50 years, they put in a new person in the same tomb. Well, what happens is the heat, the way these things are built, they're like pizza ovens. Yep, they turn into they, ovens. Yeah, so the body basically becomes cremated from the heat inside these, and then they have an ash bin. And so every so many 50 years, let's say, the body has turned to ash. I mean, they've got it down to a science. They can open the ash bin collect the ashes and then they're I don't know what happens with the ashes at that point but then they put in another body so they can keep using the same tombs over and over so you'll see on the tombs they'll have like just all kinds of names and dates on them that's because that's how they work the cemeteries there yeah some of them have some some places got those and their big family crypts mm -hmm. so say yeah, like grandma and grandpa died. They put them in there, and then they shuffle them out after a while with another person and another person in the family. Mm -hmm. And then they just put their little name plaques up there. From what I remember, but I'm not not cer certain, but from what I remember, I think like there were certain ones that were dedicated. I think Marie Laveau's was dedicated. There were certain people there that had a dedicated tomb or crypt and that they were just by themselves but that was not the norm in the cemeteries there was like a family like you said it was either family or it was just just person after person so yeah yeah pretty interesting so i was always under the assumption like i said it was high water table like you couldn't bury because caskets they didn't end up floating up you know and but, they, and ha and they the have ground. yeah they do that and and I've responded to like hurricane stuff where underground gas tanks will do it. You know, your underground storage tanks for gas stations. Um, yep. There's so much flooding that all of a sudden these enormous tanks just pop right through the cement. So, yeah. So, yeah. If they can do it, a casket can do it. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. But uh, it's pretty I interesting. Know, I know how I would respond to that just waking up and I'm like, oh, oh great. Hurricane go outside and there's coffins floating down my street and i'd be like time to go back to bed and alligators and everything else oh yeah i forgot about the alligators. and the snakes and the, and the snakes like the water moccasins and the copperheads they would just be everywhere when you when you respond to these things because we had to like respond environmentally and then you're in there doing stuff to 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 assess the damage and there's gators and snakes everywhere floating through the water because now all of a sudden they're not in their stream channels or their wetland areas. They're yep. in town. Yep, it's free rain. Yeah, there's float through. Oh, goo. yeah, it just gave me the willies. But anyway, we're off topic. How I think if, if you don't enjoy cemeteries, I'm I'm sorry. They're they're a very peaceful place. I find them very peaceful. I go in there 
I enjoy the history. I enjoy reading some of these. Some of them are pretty funny. Some of them are really sad, but <clears throat> um, they are a peaceful place. So I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Do you have any more? No, no, no. No? And uh, we thought we would um, depart from the normal. Ha, ha, ha. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is SOS and Dirty Birdie, and we're signing off on this episode. Have a good day. See everybody later. You've been listening to Speaking of Spirits, powered by Pocatello Paranormal Research in Pocatello, Idaho. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you could be here. If you're enjoying the podcast, please do us a favor and go to whatever platform you are listening to the podcast on and give us a review. We prefer the five-star reviews. This helps us know how we're doing, and it helps others to find the podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you on our next podcast.